Hey guys, so I got a lot of questions about that Sean Lane video I put up a long time ago uh, explaining what my method was or what the, the trick I said I was using was. So I'm going to break it down in this video. It's just um, a few really simple picking and fingering combinations that you weave together to get a continuous line thing going. So I'm going to break that down for you. First, uh, here's the clip I'm talking about. <laughs> So the idea is this, I've got a picking pattern and a fingering for when I want to play a group of two notes, a pattern and a fingering that go together when I want to play three notes, a pattern and a fingering for four notes, five notes, six notes, and seven notes. So I started off with the, the four note pattern because that's the easiest to practice. So if we're in E minor, chilling out here at the 12th fret. We're going to play two notes per string. We're going to start with a downstroke, then two upstrokes. So we're changing the string in an economy picking fashion, and then a downstroke. So down, up, up, down. And you just reverse it to go up. Up, down, down, up. Starting on the 12th fret of the B. Up, down on the 15, down, up. Okay, so that's for four notes. Now let's work through it in order. If I want to play a pattern of two notes, I'm going to play two notes on the string, down, up, picking. So if I'm doing that, and I want to go between that and four notes, something like this. Uh, something like that. Um, you can put these two things together, because the pattern's going to repeat. If you're alternate picking, doing your two notes, and then you do the four note pattern, you're already in the perfect picking position. Even if you shift positions with the left hand, Okay, so that's two notes. Down, up, and two notes per string on the left hand. Yep. Three notes. Um, three notes or six notes we'll do together. So three notes is three notes per string. Down, uh, up, down, up. Yeah. So when it comes to knowing your pentatonic scale, you need to be able to see two positions together to get the upper note. Okay, so three notes per string, up, down, up, then economy pick across the string. This gives you a repeated note. But if I'll do a group of three, I'll usually do it in one position, and then shift to the next position. Uh, to avoid the doubled note as often as possible. So that's three notes. Our pattern of six notes is similar to that, up, down, up, but then we go... So here, if we're doing it, if I was to play that one on one string, it's this. I'm playing so skanky today, I'm sorry. So, we're doing that sequence of notes, but we're going to stay in position. So 17, 15, 12, 15, 12, 15 on the B. And we're economy picking that. Up, down, up, down, up, up. So I can do three notes, up, down, up, six notes. Up, down, up, down, up, up, down. 
No, wait, up, down, up, down, up, up. Wait, up, down, up. Something like that. And then if I want to do nine notes, I can repeat that three position on the next string down. Four notes we've done. This is really cool for diminished stuff as well. Okay, our pattern for five notes is if we start again with that three note position and fall two more notes down the scale. Up, down, up, up, down. Something like that. That's five notes. And then for six notes we did. It's three. Okay, for seven notes, it's our three position, uh, our three pattern, and then our four pattern. Okay? I'm explaining this very quickly, so uh, do rewind it and have another look. Um, so I'm just weaving those patterns together but here's, here's the homework I'm leaving for you. Um, first of all, you need to be able to move them around, which if you've only learned two note per string pentatonic shapes, like it's gonna be difficult to get those, those ones where you've got a stretch in them into your playing, you'll need to work out um, what those positions are. The other thing is, I also play the ascending versions of these patterns, so like R5. I can play. I can play that. So um, I've worked out the ascending versions too, which I encourage you to work out for yourself and experiment with different positions. Now the reason it won't sound like Sean Lane, um, well, it can, but you have to pay attention to two different things. So Sean Lane, would not typically play diatonically when he's playing this fast stuff. A lot of it would be chromatic, and he'd approach that by using two different things, symmetrical scales and symmetrical fingerings. Um, an example of a symmetrical fingering, everything is the same fingering across all the strings. using, that's a, uh, a very hand-based idea. The other way that he plays chromatically is um, using symmetrical scales, where the actual intervals are the same. So like a whole tone scale. Yep. Um, and diminished scales, which is really easy to do. I like this one, which is basically, it's the same as this pattern of your pentatonic scale, but the lower string, we're going to shift down the notes down the fret, and I adjust the fingering accordingly, one, three, one, four. Okay, so if you want it to sound like Sean Lane, you've got to do these things, you've got to play a little bit more chromatically using symmetrical scales and symmetrical fingerings which is one thing he does. The other thing is you've got to pay attention to the rhythmic displacements that you're actually doing by combining threes and fives and fours, which takes a lot of practice, um, which I have been too lazy to commit to. But yeah, that's, that's where his sound comes from, the not just playing weird scales or weird positions, but um, accenting the group notes as he goes. So I hope you can work with that, and if you like it, please share it. I hope the video wasn't too boring. Uh, take care, bye-bye, love you lots, <laughs> if you like it, subscribe. <laughs>